Hey, it's Coach Justin from Ultimate Baseball Training, and with baseball season finally here, I thought it was very important for us to go back to the basics, the fundamentals of how to hit a baseball step by step. And so that's exactly what we're gonna be talking about in today's video. I think sometimes it's easy to get bogged down with really advanced topics, and the reality of the matter is baseball is a simple game. I believe we need to keep it that way, and the best players on the planet, they're great because they've mastered the fundamentals. And so this video, is all about the fundamentals but trust me I really think no matter what level of baseball player you are I think you're gonna get a lot of value out of today's video so without further ado let's jump in and talk about how to hit a baseball step by step so obviously the first part of hitting is your stance your stance can simply be described as your starting point so something that you're gonna notice is if you watch a big league game or a college game or whatever, you're gonna notice that not every single player has the exact same stance. And there's a reason behind that, and that is because there's no such thing as a perfect stance. And so I'm gonna give you kind of some guidelines in this particular video uh, that I think are good, especially when you're starting out. But at the end of the day, the most important thing that you have to understand when it comes to your stance is that it's just the starting point. You know, the most traditional stance is having your feet pretty much square or straight in line with the pitcher. That's a traditional way to stand with your knees bent, you know, in an athletic position like you're playing linebacker in, in football, defense and basketball, something like that. And then in terms of, you know, your hand positioning, I would say a traditional stance is your hand or your hands about shoulder height and just a little bit back here like this. So this is more of, you know, your traditional stance. But like I said, if you watch a big league game, one through nine, every hitter is going to have a slightly different stance. You're going to see some guys who like to have their feet a little bit open. Maybe they have a hard time seeing the ball, and so they want to make sure they open up and see the ball with both eyes. Sometimes you're going to see guys who like to close themselves off, although that's a kind of a rare stance to see these days. But you're also going to see guys who like to have their stance really, really wide, like Albert Pujols. You're going to see guys who like to have their feet super narrow like this. Some guys like to have their hands up here. Some guys like to have their hands down here. So again, what I'm getting at is your stance is just the starting point. But since this is how to hit a baseball step by step, I think that a good starting point is just that traditional stance that we talked about. I think the biggest thing with stance is you've got to do something that sets you up for success. If your stance, if you you know think that your uh, your most effective stance is with your feet really really narrow, but if that causes issues, then obviously we need to correct that. Okay, so. For starters, as a way, just a general way to start out in your stance, I recommend your feet slightly wider than shoulder width apart in a nice athletic position. Again, your hands about shoulder height. You can have them a little bit lower, a little bit higher if you'd like, but about shoulder height and then back here like this. We don't really want them in here. We want them more back here like this. All right, so that's stance, pretty self-explanatory. And the last thing I'll say on stance is that you wanna be nice and loose and relaxed and have a little bit of movement, right? You don't wanna be sitting here in the batter's box just completely stiff and still like a statue here because then it's very hard to kind of get things going and generate any sort of rhythm any sort of momentum in your swing so stay nice and loose and relaxed and have just a little bit of motion that's going to help you out all right and then once you have a comfortable stance that works for you really the first part of the swing is your load now the load is really just a timing mechanism all right it's not very easy to just stand here completely still like this and step and swing at the same time that just doesn't work we have to load we have to do a weight shift back which is all the load is it's a little bit of a weight shift back or another great word for it is a gather so it's a gather against your backside. You wanna make sure you're not loading over your backside because your head's gonna be moving all over the place and you're not gonna be balanced. So the big thing I wanna stress with the load is the biggest thing is it has to be nice and smooth and controlled. It has to be against your backside. And don't overdo this. It's really just to get your momentum going a little bit and it's to time the pitcher. Um, but really it's just so we have, to, we have to load our momentum against our backside so that we can then transfer that momentum forward in our stride. But I think a lot of times hitters, you know, take the load to an extreme and they see one of their favorite players on TV who have had thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of swings in their career. So they've really mastered these swing mechanics that we're talking about here. And that particular hitter might have a leg kick. And so you see 10 year olds out there trying to mimic their favorite hitter and you know, they have this huge giant leg 
leg kick load and it doesn't work for them. It causes a whole host of issues. And so for starters, you know, again, I want you to find what works for you, not just a single cookie cutter approach for every hitter, but for starters out there, you know, really just get into uh, a nice athletic stance, more of a traditional stance with your feet square. And then the load you have to remember is really just a weight shift back. That's all it is. It's going from you know, as the pitcher's kind of getting ready and getting his sign here like this, I get into my stance and then all the load is, is I load up like this. It's a timing mechanism, loading against my backside and then obviously we move into the stride. So the next thing is the stride and if our load is simply to gather our weight against our backside, if it's a weight shift back, then the stride, all that is, is a stride forward towards the pitcher. And both of these things really set up, set us up for success in terms of timing, okay? Now, something that I really wanna emphasize with both the load and the stride, a common mistake I see hitters make is when they go into their load, like we just talked about, what they do is they try to artificially push their hands back like this and load their hands. And if you watch successful hitters, when they actually go into their load phase of their swing, their hands don't really move a whole lot. They're not artificially you know, pushing their hands back towards the catcher. Really what happens is they load and as they stride forward towards the pitcher, as they stride forward, that's kind of when their hands start to walk away from their body, okay? And that's when they get this good separation and they get to this good launch position, which we'll talk about in just a second, okay? So I just wanna emphasize that point of when you're loading, don't try to push your hands back. Your hands might move just a little bit, but really it happens in your stride. As you stride towards the pitcher, that's when you get that really good separation. All right, but let's talk about the stride. When you stride, okay, one important aspect is you want your front foot to land slightly open about 45 degrees okay you don't want to land with your foot closed like this because that's going to make it very difficult for you to rotate your hips and you also don't want it completely open like this because then your energy is pretty much already spent okay so if you watch the most successful hitters on the planet when they go into their load and they stride their stride foot their front foot lands slightly open about 45 degrees so that's the stride. We're in our stance. Our load is just simply a gather against our backside, a weight shift back. As we stride forward, that's shifting that weight back towards the pitcher, all right? We wanna make sure that our weight doesn't get out here like this. A, a thing that I like to tell players when they're loading and striding is keep your head between your feet, okay? Because a common issue is, you know, getting out over your front, front side when you stride. But if you focus on keeping your head between your feet, that's never gonna happen. Because is my head between my feet here? No, it's over my front foot. So if you just focus on keeping your head between your feet, that's gonna keep you in a nice balanced position. The load and the stride will be a breeze. Now the launch position is something big that not a lot of hitters are taught. What is the launch position? The launch position is simply the position that you get into when your front foot hits the ground. So immediately when your front foot hits the ground, this is known as your launch position. And although I talked about earlier how if you look at a big league game, every hitter is gonna have a slightly different stance, a different starting point, they're not gonna have different launch positions. Every single launch position is gonna look pretty much the same and same with the positioning that the, the hitter's in at the point of contact. And so what are kind of the, the guidelines, the absolutes in terms of a launch position? Well, the launch position's obviously after you, you know, load and stride. We just talked about when you stride, your front foot should be slightly open about 45 degrees. So at the launch position, your front foot's slightly open. Your lower half, you're sunk down into a nice athletic position. You're not tall, you're sunk down into a nice athletic position down low. You're using your legs, your big muscles, that's where power is generated from, okay? In terms of your upper body, you're getting really good separation and you're getting length with your front arm. So what I mean by that is as I stride forward towards the pitcher, remember, that's when my body's naturally walking away from my hands and so you see what happened there this front arm lengthened out it's not barred out locked out like this but it's also you know not in here like this because then all i have is to throw my hands at the ball so the more separation you can get from your upper body and your lower body the more bat speed and power you're going to be able to generate so that's the launch position you land again slight front foot slightly open about 45 degrees 
we're sunk down into an athletic position. This front arm has some length to it here. Your eyes are on the baseball. And then another big thing, the knob of your bat is facing down towards the catcher. This is a big deal. Whenever I look at players' swings that they send in, a lot of the times I'll see that their knob is facing like the first base dugout or even worse, facing the pitcher or you know facing the backstop like this and they're wrapping the bat behind their head. So if you look at any successful big league hitter, when they get to that launch position, their knob is facing down towards the catcher. So you should get in that same position. Now the beauty of this is I'm a firm believer that if you get to a good launch position, everything else in your swing is gonna happen almost automatically, almost effortlessly without you really needing to force anything, okay? So once we're in that launch position, and again, I wanna stress this is not a robotic, you know, piece by piece uh, movement. So I know I'm describing the swing in, spart uh, in parts here, but understand that it's not, okay, stance and load and stride. It's not that at all. It has to be a nice, fluid, natural motion, okay? But once we get to the launch position, um, then the next part is obviously getting to the point of contact. So I got a ball and a tee here. I'm going to show you. Uh, and really, like I said, once you get into this really good launch position that we talked about, I'm a firm believer that this sets you up for success. The rotational component of the swing, obviously there's a rotational component, right? The rotational part really starts when this front heel drops, okay? When this front heel drops, you're gonna see that type of movement, okay? So I load, I stride, and I'm kinda, when I get to the launch position, I'm landing on like the ball of my foot, and then the swing really starts when that front heel drops, front heel drops, hips start to rotate, and that starts to pull everything else through the zone. Something I want you to pay attention to with what I just did, watch how my back knee here and my knob, they kind of work together at the exact same time. Okay, so I'm gonna do that one more time. In my stance, I load, I stride, right? Get to my launch position. And then when my front heel drops, see how my back knee and my knob are working together at the same time, okay? And so again, you get to that good launch position and this is all just gonna happen automatically. So you shouldn't be you know, trying to force your body into any positions in terms of getting to contact. The biggest thing in my mind is you gotta watch the baseball, you gotta hit it on the barrel and you have to focus on staying connected. What I mean by staying connected is keeping everything in tight to your body. See how in here, I'm tight to my body here, my arms are tight to my body here. This is a powerful position, okay? Same thing at the point of contact. When everything is in tight in here to my body, when my hands are close to my body, I'm quick there, I'm powerful there. However, the moment that you get disconnected or the moment that you let your hands get out here away from your body like this, or at the point of contact, if you're like this, right? If everything's away from your body here, that's not a quick position, that's not a powerful position, okay? So the biggest thing with getting to contact is you wanna watch the ball, get on plane as early as you can, um, and then really focus on staying connected, keeping everything tight to your body, okay? One other interesting thing that I wanna point out really quickly before we move on is something called shoulder tilt. Okay, so what you're gonna notice with the most successful hitters out there is when they're in their stance, their shoulders are flat, okay? But they don't remain flat throughout your entire swing. What actually happens is when you load and you stride, okay? I'm gonna do it like this. You can see the baseball bat, it's flat here. When I load and I stride and I get to the launch position, my front shoulder is actually slightly lower than my back shoulder here. It's not much, it's like nine degrees, it's not much. And then as I rotate, when my front heel drops and I rotate and I actually get to the point of contact here, my shoulders switch, you see that? So at the point of contact, my back shoulder is actually lower. And I get a lot of questions from players saying, it looks like you know, you're know you dropping your back shoulder. And what they don't realize is every successful hitter, if you freeze frame them at the point of contact, their back shoulder is definitely lower. So you don't wanna drop your back shoulder you know, too early and dump your barrel like this, but just understand that at the point of contact, your back shoulder is gonna be a little bit lower. So let's talk about the point of contact. We got our stance, load, stride, we get to a good launch position, our front heel drops, the rotational part of our swing happens. What should we look like at the point of contact? I think it's great to videotape yourself from the side and make sure that you, know, you have these fundamentals locked in. At the point of contact, one of the biggest things is your front leg 
you want to make sure that your front leg is straight, that you're hitting against a firm front side, okay? Because if your front knee is bent like this, you're leaking power, okay? And that's not a very comfortable or athletic position. So you want your front leg to be straight at the point of contact. They call it hitting against a firm front side. Your back leg, you actually want a reverse L shape with your back leg, okay? You don't wanna to be too tall at the point of contact like this because you're not doing a good job of staying back. If you stay back properly, you're gonna have a really good reverse L shape, all right? So that's kind of it for your lower half. As you noticed, I was kind of up on my, my back toe. And the reasoning for that is, you know, when my front heel drops and my hips violently rotate, it's actually gonna, that rotation of my hips is actually gonna pull this back hip towards the pitcher a little bit, which is gonna pull this back toe. It's gonna get me up on this back toe, and you'll see a lot of hitters, their back toe actually leaves the ground. Bryce Harper's a great example, okay? But that's your lower half at the point of contact. Um, and then your upper half, you wanna make sure that obviously, you know, your eyes are on the baseball. You're not pulling your head. Your eyes are on the baseball. Your hands are palm up, palm down. If you open them up like this, palm up, palm down. Okay, I have a good L shape with this arm here. And here's a big thing, okay? Your elbows have to maintain the same distance apart throughout your entire swing. Too many times I see hitters at the point of contact with this front arm straight like this, okay? This front arm should not, you should not be getting extension at the point of contact. Extension is a byproduct of doing everything else right in your swing and extension happens after, actually well after you hit the ball, okay? So at the point of contact, make sure that you should still have really good bend in your arms like this. And then the last thing, like I just talked about, extension. Extension is not something that you really need to consciously focus on usually. Usually it's something that if you do everything else properly in your swing, it kind of happens on its own. But I still want to touch on a couple things. So I, I look good at the point of contact here, right? I make contact with the ball. The big thing is mentally thinking about driving through the ball. A lot of young hitters in particular, when they get to contact, they stop at the point of contact or they get to the point of contact like this and they immediately get like really flippy with their hands here and watch my bat, okay? My bat's on plane with the pitch here, on plane, on plane, on plane. As soon as I flip my wrist like this immediately after contact, my bat is off plane right there. So that means my timing has to be absolutely perfect. Otherwise, I'm gonna get on top and I'm gonna roll that ball over, okay? so. The biggest thing is um, mentally think about driving through the baseball, hitting it hard, having an aggressive mentality, driving through the baseball, and just continuing to gain ground towards the pitcher with your top hand. What I mean by that, okay, point of contact here, continue to gain ground towards the pitcher with your top hand. And then the last thing, you always wanna finish your swing high. You don't wanna be finishing your swing low because that means you know, you're, you're chopping down, you're trying to get on top of the baseball, okay? So if we do everything right, we're gonna finish our swing nice and high. I hope you enjoyed this video as much as I enjoyed making it for you. If you enjoyed it, smash that like button for me. I'd really appreciate that. And if you haven't subscribed to our channel yet, hit that subscribe button and join the UBT family. We're coming out with new baseball videos every single week and I don't want you to miss any of them, so subscribe to the channel and last thing if you are looking to boost your bat speed and your power I put together a free bat speed workout for you it's hundred percent free all you have to do is click on the link down below in the comment section I'll leave that link in the first comment and I'll pin that comment so it's super easy for you to find so go grab your free bat speed workout subscribe to the channel thank you so much for watching I'll see you next time